Not reviewing their mistakes is the number one reason why people's scores end up staying the same throughout their entire studying progress. So today I'm going to be talking about how exactly I reviewed my practice MCAT exams in order to score in the 90th percentile on the actual MCAT. For those of you who don't know, my name is Monica and I'm going to be attending medical school at Georgetown in the fall. So, you know, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram because I talk a lot about pre-med and the med school journey and exactly everything that I learned and did to get into medical school that I think will really help you out as well. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my first MCAT video where I talk all about the six strategies that I use to score high on the MCAT and also the mindset that I had to develop in order to score really well. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. So basically, reviewing your practice MCAT exams is one of the most crucial things that you can do. All of the top scorers that I know have some form of strategy around how they review their exams, practice exams, how they really keep a tab of the mistakes that they're making and how to improve on those mistakes. I know for myself personally, I saw the biggest score jump once I started using this technique in order to keep track of my mistakes and how to learn from them. So quick thing before I show you the exact method that I use to review my exams, one thing I will say is that you want to review your MCAT exams, your practice MCAT exams, almost as soon as you're done taking the exam. If it's too hard to do it on the day that you just did the exam, which I completely understand, it's an eight hour practice exam, but you wanna do it basically the next day and max the day after. You don't wanna spend any more time where you might have forgotten what you were thinking when you were looking at a passage or what you were thinking when you came across a question. That thing should be really fresh in your brain so that you can go ahead and see how you were thinking and how you needed to adjust your thinking in order to get the right answer. All right, so this is the Google Sheet that I used to keep track of every single mistake that I made while I studied for the MCAT. And the way I constructed this Google Sheet is that on the bottom, you can see different tabs, and these relate to the resource that I was using. So it could either be UWorld, it could be the question bank, um, or the section bank, or the question pack, or even the AMC full-length exams. Every single resource I did, I assigned a separate tab to. And then every individual tab basically has a very similar layout. And the way it goes is that on one of the columns, I have um, the section that I was working on. So it could be physics and chem. Um, it also has the number of the question that I missed. The second column onto the right talks about why I missed that particular question. And um, for the most part, my reasons for missing a question came down to three different buckets. And this basically applies to everyone else as well as to why they miss a question. One is that they just don't know enough. They don't know the content enough. They are weak in a particular subject or a topic. Two is that they misread the question. They misread the passage. Um, they got confused. And then the third is that they knew the, the topic well, they knew the question and they knew what the question was asking, but they just messed up. They still didn't pick the right answer. And once I had a pretty good idea of why I missed that particular question, I would move on to column C. And this talks about the overarching content topic that the passage or the question relates to. And this was really important because at the end of the week, when I was taking stock of the sheet and I was looking over all the mistakes that I made, I could very easily pick out a particular topic that I was weak in and that I needed to study and work on more. And then lastly, column D here, this was, I think, one of the most crucial columns uh, that helped me bump up my score. And this column talks about what I learned from this particular passage or question and how I would approach it differently. And the reason I think that this was so important and so crucial to me scoring well on the MCAT is because the way I approached every single mistake that I made on my practice resources was that... I got it wrong because I didn't think about that particular question the way the MCAT wanted me to think about it. And so this here, every single explanation that I wrote down in column D was basically my way of trying to make my brain think about a particular passage or a question the way that the MCAT wanted me to think about it. And so, you know, looking at it and the more that I did this and the more I wrote these explanations out, um, the more automatic those connections became in my brain and the more naturally that explanation started to come up for me as I was taking, um, you know, future practice exams or doing more uh, practice questions. And so it really kind of allowed me to 
almost restructure and draw connections in my brain the way that this exam wanted me to do and in order for me to be successful. I want to drill this concept into your brain. There is always a correct answer. Your goal isn't to become smarter, to know more, to um, figure out some shortcut solution to the ant to the problem. No, you need to learn how the exam, how the test, how the test makers want you to think about a particular question. You need to adjust your thinking accordingly and you need to keep adjusting it until it almost becomes natural. So I have two additional things that I want to mention. The first one is that as you review your exam, you're going to come across some questions where you're like, wow, I knew the answer to this. And then you'll think to yourself, okay, I know I made this mistake here, but I'm not going to do it on exam day. Come on, this is just a one off. Mm -mm, it doesn't work that way. If you made that mistake during your testing conditions, during your practice test, the chances are even higher that you're going to make this on test day. The biggest thing I'll tell you is that don't brush over those questions where you're like, no, it's never going to happen again, I promise. It just doesn't work like that and I need you to make sure that you're taking the time to reflect on exactly what happened, what made you pick that particular wrong answer, and again, how did the test want you to think and how did you think about it instead? Another mistake that I see a lot of people doing is almost arguing with the question or with the exam itself. Now, there are definitely exceptions to this. If there is a particular question or um, passage that is absolutely completely wrong and the answer that they're telling you, you just know is completely wrong, then, you know, that's not what I'm talking about here. What I don't want you to do is to get a particular question wrong and then get super offended or insulted or spend time trying to prove to yourself why the answer that you picked was correct. And the reason why this is such a mistake is that it doesn't help you get closer to the score that you want. It doesn't get you any closer to your goal. Arguing is only going to waste your time when instead, and again, I know I sound like a broken record, time that instead could have been spent on adjusting your thinking about how the exam wanted you to think. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today and watching this video. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know and like this video if you thought it was helpful or drop it in the comments below. If there's any additional thing that you want me to cover, I'm happy to do that as well. Just leave a comment below. And last thing before I go, make sure you subscribe to this channel and definitely make sure you follow me on Instagram. But that's it for me today and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Talk to me.